Hello everyone, Ken here, back with another video for you. Today I'll be talking about the YouTube algorithm. I think that my experience as a data scientist, someone who builds algorithms like these, can provide just a little bit more context here. I hope that this video helps you to understand how to increase the chances that one of your videos gets picked up by the algorithm, and also help you to understand more about how the algorithm actually works. You know, if you're into the nerdy stuff like me. I'll be explaining all of this in simple terms, so definitely don't worry if you're not too technically savvy. If you want a deeper technical video or an interview with the data scientist at YouTube on this topic, please let me know in the comment section below. Also, let me know what types of questions you'd like me to ask them there. Make sure to stay to the end because I go in depth into how to use these findings to help grow your YouTube channel. If you're new to my content, I'm a data scientist working in the sports domain. I try to make this field as accessible to everyone as possible through my tutorial and commentary videos. I got this video idea from Jarvis, who made a video on a similar topic revolving around the YouTube algorithm. In his video, he referenced the white paper that YouTube published in 2016 about how the YouTube algorithm works. It's likely that the algorithm has changed a lot since then, but this paper gives us the deepest look into the underlying mechanisms of the algorithm. I sifted through this dense research paper so you don't have to. First, from a consumer perspective, what is the actual purpose of the YouTube algorithm? At the most basic level, the algorithm is a recommender system. Like on Netflix or Amazon, its job is to serve up content that you're likely to watch or buy. In 2016, YouTube's approach was fairly novel because they were one of the first to use a deep neural net architecture to solve this recommender system problem. More on that in a little bit. The first big takeaway from this paper is that YouTube's goal is to keep you on the platform as long as possible. For each video, the algorithm optimizes for how likely you are to click on the thumbnail and how much of the video you're expected to watch. This might be obvious to some of you who've researched this topic already, so something that you might not know is that what they specifically optimize for is a metric called expected watch time. This is the click-through rate, the probability that you click on the video, multiplied by the expected amount of time that you'll be watching that video. I believe this is a more specialized metric than what a lot of others have mentioned before in regards to this topic. With over 5 billion videos out there, how does YouTube know which ones to recommend to you? This problem is extremely complex and time consuming. And it's also one of the reasons why the YouTube algorithm is such an impressive engineering feat. If the algorithm had to go through each of the individual videos with a fine tooth comb before they recommended it to you, it would take forever to run, even with the advanced technology that we have today. To solve this problem, YouTube uses a two-phased deep neural net approach. First, they have a filtering neural network. This takes the demographics of a person, the past videos that they've watched, what they've searched for, and the videos that they've interacted with, and narrows down the number of possible videos for recommendations to less than a thousand. Something that they also look for is interactions with the video, so definitely remember to like, comment and subscribe so that we can beat the YouTube algorithm together. Next, they have a ranking neural net. This takes the group of videos that they've narrowed it down to and orders these based on what they believe will maximize your expected watch time. The video they show you first is the one that they expect you will click on and watch for the longest period of time. Again, this expected watch time metric. In this layer, they can use far more data for each video because they're working with a smaller data set. Again, less than a thousand actual videos. This allows them to be very precise with their ranking system here. A tiered system like this allows them to get very good results while still being able to make these recommendations relatively quickly, actually in almost real time. Again, there are a couple key takeaways for creators here. If someone's watched one of your videos previously and liked it, the algorithm will be more likely to recommend your content again. To me, this is a really important thing. It shows that if you make more videos and continue to expand your reach, the algorithm will recommend your content incrementally more as you grow. It also suggests to me that you're more likely to get past the filter when you have more videos and a presence on the platform. Still, what is also really nice is that the system allows you to, to go viral if your video has a very high expected watch time. 
In the paper, they also mention explicitly that a user watching till the end of the video is a relevant metric that's taken into consideration. This suggests to me that giving viewers a reason to watch till the end is a really good idea for potential growth. Again, remember at the end of this video, I'm going to summarize all of the ways that you can use this knowledge to grow your channel. Another interesting element of this filtering approach is that they use a technique called K nearest neighbors to narrow down the selection criteria. This approach is very efficient, but what's important here is how it actually works. YouTube has an idea about the type of video that you'd like. What K nearest neighbors does is find the closest videos to that other video and serve them up in the consideration set. Again, this says to me that you should be making videos that use similar tags and naming conventions to others that you'd like them to be in the same group as. I know a common strategy to get more growth is to copy tags from other popular videos. And while tags are only a small part of the equation, I think that this strategy might actually work because you're put in that same candidate set. I think it's also really important to produce unique content, but a sad truth is that maybe similar content to other people's work might actually get you more views. With a system as we've described it, there's a huge problem actually. New videos would be at a huge disadvantage when getting recommended because there's significantly less data on them. To encourage new videos to gain traction and go viral, YouTube bakes the age of the video into the model. As you can see from this graph, you get a pretty solid boost of exposure in the first few days that your video is published. In my most viral video, it peaked almost exactly three days after I published it. This is definitely something to consider as well as that if it's not doing as well as you want right away, you still have that three day window. So what if the algorithm is wrong? What if I made awesome content and nobody watched it? This can absolutely happen. The nice thing about the algorithm is that it's validated with A-B testing. This means that they're constantly collecting data on how your videos actually perform and integrating that into the system. This is why you can see a video that you made a while back suddenly pick up steam and kind of go down that viral track. If a topic becomes interesting or an overlooked video shows a change in performance, it can gain traction in real time. I've peppered in a few tips for creators as I go, but here's a summary of the findings to help you maximize the exposure of your YouTube video. First, make sure that you maximize your expected watch time. Your thumbnails and video content should match up so people watch the videos for long periods of time. Next, give viewers a reason to watch till the end. As I noted, this is factored into the algorithm explicitly. Third, create content and try to produce videos that are similar within a domain. It's important to experiment, but to get into the corpus of recommended videos, similarity definitely helps. Next, you should maximize your reach in the first few days. From my experience, this is where a video can really take off. As I mentioned before in my you know, viral-ish video, the graph suggests that it peaked around the third day and continued an upward trend. A lot of my other videos peak that third day and go the opposite direction after that. So that's where you can really see the tipping point and I try and maximize your reach on that third day. Lastly, since the algorithm does live A-B testing, Make sure to tweak things periodically if you think you've produced good content and it falls flatter than you would have liked. Maybe it was just overlooked and a change of thumbnail or a change of some of the keywords can provide a spark. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that this video has been useful to you if you were either a creator or a data scientist. With that being said, good luck on your data science journey.